Welcome to this talk on the urinary system. Let's start by thinking about the main components of the urinary system. So we're going to start off with two kidneys. There's going to be the right kidney and the left kidney. And actually in anatomy, the right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney, because if you think about it, you've got the liver just here, which is quite a bulky organ. And then the kidneys are connected to the ureters. And these go down the back of the abdominal cavity. All the way down into the pelvic cavity, where we have the urinary bladder. So down in the pelvic cavity, we have the urinary bladder. And of course, how big the bladder is depends on how full it is at the time. If it's fairly empty, it will be well down in the pelvis. But if it's full, for example, if a patient's retaining urine, you'll be able to palpate and indeed percuss the bladder further up than you would normally expect. Now, the ureters go in behind the bladder. So the ureters actually pass behind the bladder here like this. And they actually go in near the base of the bladder. So the ureters are entering behind the bladder towards the base. So the urine is going to be produced in the kidneys. That urine is going to travel down the ureters. And the ureters are muscular. This is an active peristaltic process. So if you decided you wanted to stand on your head for a few hours and you drank a lot of fluid, you'd still need to pass urine because the ureters will actually work against gravity because the urine is actually propelled down the ureters peristaltically. And that's important to know about because when patients get uterine colic, if they get a stone stuck in their ureters, then the muscular wall of the ureter tries to push that stone down. And that causes the extreme pain of renal or uterine colic. And then the entrance or the exit from the bladder is the urethra. In women, the urethra is relatively short. In men, it's going to be longer. And in men, the prostate gland surrounds the top of the urethra. So if that's the urethra, the prostate gland actually surrounds the urethra in men. So this would be the area of the prostate gland just here. Surrounding the urethra. And this explains why men often have difficulty passing urine as the prostate gland enlarge, enlarges. So in all men, as they get older, over the age of 45 or 50, the prostate gland is going to enlarge. And it's going to partly enlarge out the way, but it will also encroach in the way, narrowing the lumen of the urethra. Ultimately, that can lead to retention of urine and difficulty passing urine and a narrowed stream of urine. So older men cannot pass urine as quickly as younger men. So we have the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, prostate gland in men and the urethra. Now the kidneys are basically in three layers. The outer layer is the cortex and there's an inner layer, the medulla. So this would be the medulla area here. with the cortex around about the outside, the cortex in this area here. And because this is to do with the kidneys, everything is described as renal. So this would be the renal cortex. This would be the renal medulla. And in the middle here, there's an area where the urine plex, so the urine is actually produced by the cortex and medulla, what's known as the parenchyma of the kidney. 
the urine passes out of the medulla into this area in the middle and this is the renal pelvis. So we've got the renal cortex, the renal medulla and then in the middle here we have the renal pelvis where the urine actually clecks. From the renal pelvis the urine then passes into the ureter and then down into the bladder as it's peristaltically transported down the ureter towards the bladder. And of course the situation is the same in the other kidney, renal cortex, renal medulla and renal pelvis. Now you've probably noticed from experience that if anyone pokes you in the kidneys in the back there it's really quite painful. Renal pain can be very extreme pain. And this is primarily because round about each kidney there is a renal capsule. So the renal capsule is fibrous tissue, a layer of fibrous tissue that surrounds each kidney. It's fairly thin, maybe only two millimetres or so thick, but it's tough, proteinaceous, fibrous tissue which is encapsulating the kidney. And this is very rich in pain receptors. Do you remember the specialised name for pain receptors? They're called nociceptors. So the renal capsule is very sensitive to pain because it is rich in nociceptors in the renal capsule. Round about the renal capsule, there's another, hopefully nicely, fairly thick layer of renal fat called perirenal or perinephric adipose tissue. So a layer of adipose tissue, an adipose capsule, surrounding the kidney to protect it from external traumas. Perirenal or perinephric fat or adipose tissue protecting the kidney. Now, that's the kidney in basic outline. But it's interesting to look at it in a little more detail. So let's now think of a kidney in a little more detail, with a little more detail on the anatomy. So here we have a kidney. And what we notice when we look in more detail is that the renal medulla is actually arranged in a series of renal pyramids. The, most people have about eight of these renal pyramids, but six, seven, eight, nine, ten would all be a normal range. And these renal pyramids are triangular shaped. They have a base, they have a base at the top, that's a bit small, but a base there at the top and a pointed bit going down like this. So they're triangular on cross-section, but they're actually pyramid-shaped in three dimensions. So there's a series of these renal pyramids. They have a widened base and a smaller apex. So the renal medulla is actually composed of these medullary pyramid shaped areas of tissue. And of course the capsule is still around about the outside. So we'll still have the renal capsule around here, around the outside. On the outside of that the perinephric or perirenal adipose capsule. The renal capsule, tough, fibrous. Proteins contains things like collagen, but also contains lots of pain receptors. And when you're looking at a kidney, this is the thin layer that you can actually peel off the surface of the, of the kidney. So now we see that the renal cortex is round about here. And that the renal medulla is actually made of these renal pyramids. And the cortex has columns which project down between the pyramids. 
So the cortex is this part on the outside. That is the renal cortex around the outside. But also the cortex has, is, consists of these renal cortical columns projecting down between the pyramids. And we've noted that each pyramid has a base and an apex. Now, the urine is actually produced by the cortex and the medulla, the parenchyma of the kidney. And what happens is the urine passes down largest ducts, collecting ducts, that pass down through the medulla, through the renal medulla. So we start off with small collecting ducts that go into larger collecting ducts until at the bottom, these large ducts that I've drawn here are called papillary ducts, the larger papillary ducts. And when you look at the renal medulla, you can see that it's got this striated form of appearance. It also contains the tubules of nephrons. So the urine is produced by a combination of the activity of the cortex and medulla. Once the urine is produced, it goes down into these collecting ducts, eventually into the papillary collecting ducts. And these papillary collecting ducts are so called because they go into the renal papillae. And the papilla means a nipple shaped structure. So when the urine is produced, it actually comes out the apex of the pyramids. But then it needs to be collected. So what we have is there's a series of tubes like this. So I think you can see now what we have is a series of tubes, an internal tubular structure within the kidney. So when the urine's formed, it comes down here, down the papillary ducts, out of the papillae of the medulla, at the apex of the medullary pyramids, and it passes into these now tube-like structures. And these tube-like structures are called calyces. So collectively, they're called calyces. One would be called a calyx. So there we have a renal calyx. And the initial calyces are minor calyces, and they go into slightly bigger major calyces. So these are collecting the urine here as it passes out of the apex of the renal pyramids. And so the urine from there goes into the renal pelvis. And from there, the ureter is continuous with the pelvis and the ureter will take the urine down towards the bladder. So once the urine enters the pelvis, it'll pass into the ureter and be peristaltically transported down towards the urinary bladder for storage prior to passing, which is the process of micturation. Now, urine is supposed to flow down that way, and that's good because that washes all the bacteria down. This area should be sterile, so hopefully there shouldn't be any bacteria. But occasionally bacteria from an ascending infection can get up the ureters and colonise the calyces and the pelvis with bacteria. That would be a pathological infection. And when that happens, that's called pilitis. So pilitis is inflammation usually caused by bacterial infection of the pelvis and the calyces. And indeed, there can be infection of the parenchyma of the kidney as well. That would be nephritis if there is infection 
well, itis, of course, means inflammation of, so, but it would usually be caused by infection of the parenchyma. Nephritis, so remember the parenchyma is the cortex, the cortical columns, and the medulla. In practice, if there is such an infection, it tends to infect the pelvis, the calyces, and the renal parenchyma. We would therefore call such an infection pyelonephritis. So pyelonephritis, inflammation of the whole kidney, usually caused by bacterial infection, usually as the infection ascends up through the ureters. And I would certainly expect you to treat that with aggressive antibiotic therapy, as it's really quite a dangerous infection to suffer from. The patient can be very unwell with pyelonephritis. So there we see the basic structure of the urinary system. The urinary system is the whole structure. The kidneys specifically, if we're talking about the kidneys specifically, we talk about the renal system. Renal is to do with kidneys. Essential to filter blood, take out the impurities from the blood, maintain the homeostatic balance of the blood and pass everything that we don't need into the urine to be eliminated and excreted from the body.